Alright, let's go on, guys. This is gonna be the experience video of Derby Raw of May 31st, 2013. Um, I know it's June 16th, 2013, or June 17th, 2013, depending on when I want to put this up. But, um, yeah, this is a long time. I've been wanting this video for a long time, but I just haven't found the time, and I finally found the time to do this video. So, as you guys can see, this is the picture of where I was sitting. This was at the main event between Ryback and um, John Cena Tables match. I'm going to take that down. And you guys are going to see my face. So, uh, yeah. So it started out uh, my dad had to be to work at 5.30 because he works at the arena. So I was there and the day I stayed home, oh I left early for school because I wanted to go over to the arena just check everything out. So I went, I went, I went home, and I was freaking out because my WWE shop, my second WWE shop order with my Fandango shirt and my Shield shirt, uh, were supposed to be in by Thursday, Friday the latest, and I wanted my Shield shirt to wear to the event. So here I am, I'm freaking out. I don't want to go to the arena until my Shield is traded. So then I waited home for like two and a half hours. FedEx finally came. I was home. I was like. Signed it, bang, you're gone. Alright, so we were there, and I wore my shield shirt, and I was at the arena for quite a while. I was probably at the arena until like 4.45, and then I ended up coming back home, eating, and then my dad left, and then I left shortly after when my mom went to So my sister and my mom dropped us off, and I was at the arena. I was sitting ring level. Here's a... Here's the picture of the ring level. It's kind of blurry. That's where I was sitting mainly the whole night. You guys have seen them in my Day in the Life video. And you guys, if you haven't seen my Day in the Life videos, go check them out. They're on my channel. But, um, yeah, so that was that. And then we had, I was there, and you had a lot of merchandise. Shirts were 35 as always. And, uh, the foam fingers were like 15. Uh, right back was 15. And then, for those of you who didn't see this, I got the Cena signed photo in my thing or whatever. So, yeah. So, that was that. I had, I had 20 bucks. I didn't really want to spend a lot of money because of the uh, thing. And then, uh, uh, that was that was my 20 bucks I spent. Because I don't spend a lot. Oh, and I also got a collector's clip too, but I'm not going to get that. You guys can see it in my... WWE shop, many of my WWE shop unboxing that much, you know. But, um, yeah. And then, after that, uh, the show kicked off with a dark match between, I did not film the dark match. It was between Oksana and Caitlyn, and Oksana picked up the victory, and then Nomi and Kate, Cameron, and the Bella Twins came out, and you knew they were going to be on the card. So that was that. Uh, then we had about a 35 minute break until actually the show actually kicked off. The dark match, and then everyone was thinking the show was gonna come out, but the bell time wasn't until 7:30. The dark match was at like 6:45, so it's a good 30, 30, 35 minutes. And then the uh, show kicked off with the promo tonight is the night, and I'm all that other crap. Um, and then you had our truth versus Antonio Cesaro kicked out some things. And then, then, uh, Truth picked up, our tr truth picked up that victory. And then up next you had, let's see, you had, uh, Ted DiBiase versus Hunigo. And, uh, Ted DiBiase picked up the victory there. Glad to see Hunigo actually there. And, uh, I haven't seen him ever since, so that was good. And then, uh, up next, we had uh, the Bella Twins uh, taking on uh, Cameron and Naomi. Uh, they they had one before the inter they had one before the intermission and one after the intermission, just trying to just space them out. And then uh, then before the intermission was before we went to the intermission was the Intercontinental Championship match between uh, Wade Barrett, Sheamus, and Fandango. I basically filmed that whole match. You guys can go check out my Dan Lin video. Um, uh, then the intermission came, uh, Justin Roberts was like, 
promoting stuff because you can get the Cena photo, you can get the Ryback photo, you can get the uh, Sheamus photo signed, and then he was like, you can get the all new WWE program, and then I was like, I don't really want the new program. So that was that. And then they were playing, uh, tr uh, like the Trons, like, I don't know, like the entrance video. They teased David Otunga, and they also teased, uh, big name. Can't think. Oh, Curtis Axel and The Shield. Uh, Curtis Axel and The Shield were not there. Either was David Otunga. So, I was kind of pissed about that, that they kind of teased us, and everyone was like, The Shield, The Shield, The Shield. And then a road dog... Uh, before we came, before the intermission was over, well, after, well, when I turned the lights off, a uh, road dog came out and the whole place just popped. It was like, you didn't know? And the whole place was like, it was shaking in the building. And then he came out, cut his promo about Armstrong and DX. It was basically a little mini Q&A before the match started again. Uh, I was there, uh, the lady behind me asked her if she could film it, she's like, how do you work this thing? I was like, whatever. So then, I didn't get the film, but I asked them, like, how, how is Triple H and Shawn Michaels related to you? I actually went up in the ring, was like, how is Shawn Michaels related to you? He was like, well, uh, they've been my best friends for over 25 years plus, and I was like, it was a, it was a good, solid 40 minute Q&A, and then the match just started up again. Uh, you opened up, oh, well, they actually had a WWE poll during the intermission, or after the Q&A was over. It was like, who do you want banned during ringside? Tons of Funk or the Funkadactyls. And everyone was going to vote for the Funkadactyls, but they ended up banning, uh, they banned Brie Bella and Nikki Bella from ringside, which was kind of obvious. And that was, that was it. And then, uh, up next was, uh, the prime time players, Darren Young and Tennis Neal versus Tensai and Brodus Clay. And uh, Brodus Clay and Tensai picked up the victory there. Darren Young and Titus O'Neil were chill dudes. So like what happened was they were there and like after the match was over or like they were walking by. So I was like I specifically handed I handed my paper aside. He was like so like I handed the mark to him. He signed it, and there's a guy in front of me. Naomi signed his shirt, and then Sheamus, or er, and his shirt, and his son's shirt. So then I handed him the program. Darren Young goes, do you want to sign this too? And the guy was like, yeah. So he signed it, and then the guy took, Darren Young took my marker. And then when he realized he had my marker, he came back out during, during, uh, during the, uh, Seen, uh, Ziggler and uh, Big E tag team match against Chris Jericho and uh, God dang it. These are some, oh, and uh, Sheamus. Sheamus did that double thing. Darren Young comes running out. I was, he was like, I, f I stole your marker. And he goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So he came, he came running out. Fans were like, what is he doing here? So he, didn't care. he gave me my marker back. He took my marker. He sprinted all the way back the entrance thing. And he was just talking to fans. And then Titus O'Neil was sitting down ringside right behind me. I got a film of that. Security guards were like, nobody come up to Titus O'Neil. And everyone was like, and Titus was like, it's okay, it's okay. And he was like, no, it's not okay. We were like, whoa. So then, uh, that was that. And then uh, the main event was next. You had Ryback versus Cena. Uh, the tables match, the Ryback and Cena match was eh. Uh, I got most of that film. That was, that's in my part three in the light video. But it was boring, because, like, this is the one shot I got of him that I showed in the original, uh, the video part. And I also have many pictures that I'm going to make into an iMovie, too. So, um, that's the, that's the plan, so to speak. I might make, I might do the experience video and then put it up, a, uh, there to be pictures from WWE Half Show or whatever, whatever, whatever the hell it's gonna be called. So then that was that. Uh, the show was over, and there were these uh, little kids in front of me, and these little uh, the little kids like assigned. So it was like this guy, this guy, and then like over here. I know I'm missing some of the matches. 
I can't think about the top of my head. There were there were just too many. Um, so they were like, "Can we stand next to you?" And I was like, "Yeah, have at it." You know, whatever. They're not gonna like bowl me over. So I was like standing. I was standing like right, like right, like like this, and like the entrance ramp was over. And there's these little kids like physically pushing me out of the way just so they can get a high five from uh, Seamus. And their mother was like, guys, calm down, calm down. And I was like, I was like, no, it's okay. You know, they're just kind of pushing me a little bit. Um, after the uh, Ryback and Cena match, we had a dark match between Justin Gabriel and Epico. Um, I didn't film this match either because it was just like a 10 minute match. A lot of the fans left because they didn't know it was going to be a dark match. I stood right there. And then after that was over, the music was, they had no music. They just came out and wrestled. So I talked to Gabriel and Epico. It's like, how, like Carlito. And talked about Carlito for a little bit. And then uh, I asked Gabriel, what's it like wrestling back in South Africa? He's like, I'm like, there, I'm like, there, John Cena over there. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, you know, it's like, it's, it's nice over there. And it's like, it's being, it's me almost. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And he was like, it's, it's fun. I was like, cool. And then I shook his hand. It's a nice to meet you. I didn't get a picture because my, my phone was dying. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that was, it was, would I say it was fun? Yeah, it was fun. Oh, uh, the only thing that really pissed me off was, uh, oh, Zack Ryder, I forgot another thing. Uh, Zack Ryder was there. He wrestled Bri White, who's in the, uh, it was pretty good actually right now um then uh uh what happened was it was uh brad maddox came out after the intermission and was like i vic guerrero's not here so i'm gonna be your supporting match supervisor and someone yelled fuck you you cow like that and brad maddox turns around and he looked pissed like this was no gimmick play he turns right he looked right around and he stares right at him and goes and he mouth he mouth like that and everyone was like oh like pounding him and then he he left his ring attire is amazing i didn't film brad maddox i might have filmed a little bit of the zach Ryder and brad maddox match but uh bray white squashed zach Ryder. he grew out his hair i thought he honestly was going to get released at this point but it looks like there is slams him for summer slam so Hopefully it's a good gimmick plan. Uh, I'm a huge supporter in Long Island Wrestling. But, um, yeah, so that was that. And then Brad Maddox came rushing down to the ring, challenged Zack Ryder, and was like, yo, you know. And then, uh, Chad Pat was chill. He was the referee. So was Scott Armstrong. I sent him a tweet on Twitter. I was like, can I, can I meet you? And he was like, yeah. I was like, can I meet you? I'm going to be front row. He's like, oh, sure. Should I get the picture taken with him? And, uh, I'm not going to show you guys everything. It'll probably be up in the pictures or whatever. But, I mean, it was, it was fun. So. And then, after that was done, uh, for the dark match, I don't really think there was nobody in the stands, because people don't know there's a dark match now. And how shows, and I never knew of this either. Usually when there's a pre-dark match, there's usually an end-dark match. Uh... Uh, they had a lot of Ziggler stuff went pretty well and then uh, Ziggler wasn't there but I mean it was intense so so it was pretty uh, it was pretty good I wouldn't if I had to score this show it would be an 8 out of 10 only because of my seating uh uh, and I saw Jim Duggan was in attendance. He was signing in the booth. I didn't see him, but I already, I've already met him once. And then, uh, Finley was traveling there, too. Finley was, uh, doing and then Oh, the security guard for the, uh, event. The security guard was, like, yelling at my dad. And then he yelled at Larry, who's another guy that I know who's very good at event. Then he yelled at Terry. And then he yelled at, and then she, uh, she yelled at the head of the Civic Center, Dwayne, and now Dwayne's gone, so it doesn't matter. But he was like, 
she was like yelling and was like, this is going to go down, you're going to fall me, or you're going to blah, blah, blah. So then Terry comes in and was like, ma'am, listen, we have it under control. We know what your superstars are. We know about it. It's stubborn to me. It's high and stuff. It's not like it. And it's not like TNA. And as soon as I heard TNA, I turned around. I was like, yo, T did Terry just say TNA? Like, like TNA doesn't care. I mean, TNA cares like you put your hands on them. But like, they're, that was pretty chill. Uh, like, they were, like, Terry knows TNA and stuff. Because I've been to all the wrestling events and, like, Seriously, TNA is more better than WWE, first of all, in fan interaction. Uh, mainly because uh, they do a lot of signs for the shows and when the show is going on. And plus, they don't take the whole lobby up upstairs. They do all their stuff down there. And they don't sell beer, so they can't throw beer at the rest of them. The people get pissed and Terry is like, well, if you don't like the show, you can leave. And plus, like, a front row seat is only like 30 bucks. So, it's pretty, that's, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, so that, uh, I'm hoping for them to return. But, uh, yeah, this is my experience video, and I hope you guys all like it. It took me a while trying to remember all the matches. And, uh, hashtag TNA all the way. And, uh, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And my, probably I'll make a video after this all with all my pictures. And a bunch of wrestling themes going with it for some type of music. Who knows? And, um... Uh, probably that's it for this week. I got school coming up. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm out on Wednesday. I got a bodybuilding seminar to go to. So bodybuilding should be fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm working towards it. That's why I haven't been. But if you guys want to see some results, go to my Twitter page. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, guys, I'll see you guys all in the next video. And I'm trying to push this to 17 minutes. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping TNA can return to the Glen Falls Civic Center, and I don't have to travel all the way down to Albany to see them. Because that's, like, $50 in gas like that, and then the $50 a ticket, so we're about 100 bucks, and then plus another 20 autographs. Although, I don't, I did get to go backstage. I met pretty much, I didn't meet any anybody, really. I really didn't get the access pass. Uh, Ryback was all right. Cena was great. And all the other guys I met, like Darren Young with the Sharpie, that was, that was, that's a good story to tell. So, uh, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video, and uh, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe.